very excited to have my next guest join us. She's a very talented singer and artist who just released her debut album called Flounder. It is Quinny. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for really having me. Appreciate it. How are you? I know you're on tour right Pretty now. Pretty good. Yeah, a little bit of a tour. Yeah. Like a taste. Little, little, uh, what, four city jobs? Five shows, but one is where I live, so, you oh, okay. know. Okay. That doesn't stressful. count. Yeah, that one doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a little small run back in March as well. Yeah, that was just like album release shows. Yeah, yeah. But they were kind of spread out, so we did LA, New York, and then London. So are you getting exactly accustomed easy. to the lifestyle? and? Here and there, I mean, it's not, my family lives on the East Coast and I live on the West Coast now, so I have to do a fair, a fair bit of travel these days anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I bring this all up because it's so interesting how your, your musical journey has taken you, in, you know, to where you are right now. In, in particular, how during the pandemic when people were like, let's be, let's be honest, you know, uncertain as to yeah. what to do and where to go. and you know, where, what they should be doing and things like that. You picked up and, and moved to L.A. in the middle of the pandemic after yeah. school was like, you know what, <laughs> yeah, go, go home now. Yep. And you said, I'm just going to see what happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> packed up the cat and, and left. I actually got the cat in L.A. Oh. Yeah, my first apartment, she jumped in my window. We put up all these signs, no one ever claimed her. <laughs> now she's mine. For is like that, almost three wow. years now. That is, that is uh, fate right there. Exactly. Speaking with to you. Yep. Were you always that spontaneous? What was, what was that moment that led you to that? Um, no. I mean, I didn't really make any sort of bold decision because um, I went to one year of college and then COVID happened. And so I was at home with my parents for probably five-ish months. I was working at like a garden store. And then I had a bit of money saved up and I was like, I'm just going to be in L.A. for a little bit. But I didn't really commit to it at the time. And then I just stayed there longer and longer. So I wouldn't say I'm exactly spontaneous in that regard, but um, I have I have strong gut feelings, and I'm pretty good at following those altogether. So I guess that contributed to some extent. Yeah. We heard of all, all those digital nomads, the people that can work from home. Exactly. All right, I'm going to Greece. <laughs> I'm going to Italy. Yep. It'll be fine. <laughs> I was no. like, I can write songs in LA. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? Because obviously there wasn't the action-packed Hollywood scene going down yeah. at the time. Um, what was it like? Uh, I wouldn't say it was like anything. I mean, I think it's one of those things where, you know, everyone is in their head about like, oh, LA people are like this, New York people are like this, whatever it is. But I, I have found at least wherever I've lived has just been whatever I've made it. And I kind of get to shape what that looks like. You know what I mean? And that first year was pretty quiet. Honestly, the first two years of me living there was very quiet. It wasn't until like around this time last year when I started getting a little bit noticed on TikTok, etc. that my life got a little bit busier because all the time prior was just sort of head down working quietly on music type time. I think a lot of artists felt that way. For right? sure, yes. Where they said, all right, it's just me, my notebook, and my bedroom. Exactly, yeah. And that's the way you had always written as well, right? Yeah, I um, ever since moving to LA, I live with my producer, Jake, and we also were in that first year of college together. We grew up near each other in New Jersey. Um, and so we've lived together now for three years. And so that also makes working from home and all that stuff a lot easier because we can just any night be like, let's make a song right now. You know, <laughs> we don't have to like, you know, section off two weeks and be like, we're making the album right now. Right. Yeah. And, and prior to that, you said you hadn't been to LA much at all. You can count on your hand how many times. Yeah. What was it like seeing the Pacific Ocean? Um, Good, great. I'm used to the Jersey Shore, so my expectations are lo all my love to the Jersey Shore. I love it a lot. It's like my, my heart lives there. But um, the beaches on the West Coast are definitely more magnificent and offer more wildlife, which is kind of what I love. So I was uh, very um, pleasantly surprised. Because I understand you were going to go into marine biology. Yes. You have this affinity for, <laughs> yep. for the water and the ocean and things like that. That's why I ask. Yeah, there was one beach specifically um, out in L.A. That was like my favorite spot for tide pools and all that. But due to all the rain this last winter, the landslides have just closed it off for now. <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer. But there's You have to be me. loving living in California because of all the nature that you can take Absolutely. in. The lakes. Yep. Have you been to Tahoe? I haven't. No, not yet. Oh. Yeah. You got to get going. I get around a, a good amount otherwise, but I've never been there specifically. What was it about marine biology and wildlife in the, in the water that just resonated with you? Um, it's always just, the beach has always just very much been my happy place. I was like, my grandma lived at the Jersey Shore when I was growing up. And I, so I just like spent all my summers there at her house. And I would just be like this little kid, like 
in the tide pools like belly first all day you know mm -hmm. what I mean just like looking underwater and it's just always been something that's fascinated me and um, I, I really thought I wanted to do it for a while I went to all sorts of marine biology camps I went to sea turtle camp Oh, there's a sea stuff. turtle camp? There, there's a camp for everything, <laughs> shockingly. I went to two years of sea turtle camp. What do they, what do You clean, you literally clean like sea turtles, like rescue sea turtles. And like you excavate a nest one day and like it's, it's incredible, honestly. Wow. It's like a bunch of like 13, 14 year old girls mostly because for whatever reason, marine biology is mostly women. Um, and you just do beach turtle and, stuff. And you clean turtles. Yeah, but then I was like, I don't want to do anything STEM related in college. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to do this. I'm never taking a math class again. <laughs> Clearly, that has left so much of an impression for you to name this album Flounder. Absolutely, and yeah. Uh, congrats on the release. Thank you so much. So much attention, obviously. So well deserved. Thank you. So many great songs. And you mentioned TikTok. And so the standout, of course, is Touch Tank on there. You there had you to go. include that. Of course. But this has been an album that's been in a number of years in the making yeah we actually it's actually funny um, because we basically finished the album completely a year ago today actually which is pretty cool um, but we had started it when I was we'd like first started tracking the first song um, in my freshman year of college when I was still 18 so like that September or October and I'm turning I'm 22 today so it's kind of old, yeah. <laughs> See, we're filming this and then it'll come out later, so. Yeah, I, exactly. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it's old, it's aging in my brain at least, but not necessarily <laughs> to everyone else. What do you, what now, okay, so you brought it up, you look back at your 18 year old self with wisdom. Yeah. What do you see? Um. I see the same person. I have a lot of compassion for myself at that time and I have, I'm proud of the fact that I've you know, kind of wandered my way to where I am just using my instinct and intuition. Um, and I wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say exactly as confident in myself at the time then that, as I am now. Um, but I think like all of the framework for that was already there. And I just like, if I could say anything to myself at that time, it would just be like, you know what you're doing. You just have to kind of trust your instinct, you know. It's interesting you say that because I look back at my younger self, I see a lot more confidence and less fear. Yeah, interesting. So that's why I'm curious, that's why that, when you said that, I was very curious, because, and you also picked up and moved. When, yeah. Granted, a few years ago. I'd say yeah. I was definitely fearless, but I was very, like, I don't think I um, trusted my, like, decisions as much as I do now, if that mm. makes sense. Mm. I was probably a lot more impulsive back then. Whereas now I feel a lot more <laughs> calm, cool, and collected, you know? And the, Maybe too fearless back then. <laughs> and, and the through line on many of the songs, at least, is about trust yes. in yourself, others, and other aspects of life. Yeah. How long did it take for you to realize that? Um, probably I realized maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago. Probably like around a year to half a year to being done with the record. Um, I realized that because I wasn't, I don't know. I don't really like to go into a project being like, it's about this, it's called this, whatever. Because every project for me kind of encapsulates like a time period, you know? And it feels weird to just be like, I want to target every song to be written about this one thing. Um, and I really just believed that it was going to figure itself out. I'd figure out the name, I'd figure out the like general topic. But at a certain point, I realized that was kind of just the like biggest um, subject matter that I was coping with in my brain as a young adult in terms of making decisions for myself, um, trying to keep myself safe and like make the right relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's an interesting yeah. topic because debut albums are always this introduction to the world of who you are and yeah. it encapsulates a number of years and so we're talking three years here. Yep. So much growth yes. <laughs> between those ages of being a teenager into yeah. the early adulthood in, in, in 20s yep. basically, right? Yeah. And trust being the through line is so interesting that that for sure. has persisted. I, it's an insecure time of life for sure, I yeah. think for everybody. Yeah. Um, I think you get to 18 and you're like, I'm an adult, I'm an adult. Uh, I should have everything figured out and you're just like a couple months out of <laughs> high school, you know, yeah. so 
it's, it's like, like this magic number that people yeah, are like, exactly. you know, snap the fingers. I'm no, grown up. Yeah. yeah. No. It's like here you go. It's never like that. Here's it takes life. a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I, I don't feel anywhere close to fully formed at this point. You know what I mean? But I today, try to take it in stride. You know, today being your birthday, there's always the celebrations, and they're like, all right, so what did you learn in the last year? Oh, what did I learn in the last year? Um, gosh. Uh, I've learned to be very flexible and just kind of roll with the punches and just once again trust that everything <laughs> will work out in the right way and um, just try and like leave everything up to fate I think <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love the album it's, it's, it's so good Thank and so it much. really does encapsulate those feelings I think it's very universal one of the songs that I love and I want to ask about is better thank you is, is, is so good. It, as soon as I heard it, I, I had to listen to it again and again and again. Thank you so much. Um, what was the catalyst for that? How easy was that to write? Um, that was a very easy song to write. That was one of those that I just felt like I had to kind of pull out of me. Um, but I think the core topic of that song is like in being a songwriter or artist in general, something I've kind of always grappled with is the fact that I feel like I always have to be like unwell or miserable or in some sort of like state of disarray in order to make my best work um, and so I guess I just really wanted to talk about that and how I felt so stuck being like I don't want to improve myself because I want to be an artist you know which is I think something that a lot of artists deal with and the song in and of itself is oxymoronic because I'm you know, writing a song. It's very meta. Like, I'm writing a song about it, and I don't know. It's a, it's a whole thing. Um, but, yeah, I think it just kind of came from that place because when I first started writing, so, I mean, I, I first started writing songs when I was really, really little, but when I first started, like, really wanting to do it and wanting to practice it, I was in high school. Every song I wrote was incredibly depressing, almost, like, melodramatic at points, you know, like, really overdoing the topic. Um, as one does when you're As in one high does school, when right? you're in high school. <laughs> I, I forgive myself. Um, but yeah, it's just something I've always uh, kind of grappled with and uh, I want to talk about it, yeah. And you obviously have elevated your profile with Touch Tank. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't not talk about it and TikTok being the catalyst of it. How do you feel that it was that platform that helped to give you more exposure versus quote unquote, all the hard work you put in? Um, I feel neutral about it, honestly. I always kind of turned my nose up uh, at TikTok before it worked for me. And I think that's how it is for everyone. You know what I mean? Um, I think until you kind of reap the benefits of the app, it's like, I hate that platform. It's ruining all art. But at the end of the day, the beauty of it, in my opinion, is that in a lot of ways, it's really democratized who has access to popularity and reaching audiences and um, I've just seen it ultimately as a tool for myself and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but when it does it's like a really great boost that otherwise I wouldn't have access to. I mean it's awesome because you didn't have to dance you didn't have no. to beg and plead you didn't have to say hey yep. I'm an artist thank god <laughs> my album comes out pre-save right yep. all the promotion I'm which sure I you, sometimes still have I'm, to do I'm, now. I was gonna say you probably have to do <laughs> yeah. anyway so yeah but uh, that's awesome I, I love to hear those kind of stories. For sure it was such a blessing. Yeah so congratulations thank on you all so that. much. And happy birthday. Thank you. Best of luck with everything and thank look so forward much. to the show tonight. Thank you. So good talking to you. You too. It's Quinny right here on B-Sides.